has just been brought from her hangar and successfully f fastened her mooring mast on the field at Cardington. She has a gas capacity of 5 million cubic feet and she is designed to carry 52 passengers. The co passenger accommodation is a, uh, in the center of the ship and is independently slung to the main structure in order to obviate vibration. The ship has four fins. They are very massive affairs and each fin has an area greater than that of a tennis court. There's also a little cockpit at the end of the ship, which you can see. That must be a cold job to sit in that. There she goes, she's away. Rising majestically. The nose of the airship is brought down to the head of the mast and an automatic coupling engages securely uh, attaching the airship to the mast head. There she is, steady as a rock. She is now fast and secure. Well, the R101 has completed its first flight. The British airship has been taken from her shed and is now moored at the huge mast at Carlington, where she is being prepared for her flight to India. You notice how she appears to dwarf the cottages on the edge of the aerodrome. Taking a closer look at the ship from the stern, the beauty of her lines and the immense size of her rudder and elevators are strikingly impressive. During her long stay in the hangar seen on the left, an extra bay or section 45 feet in length has been built into the ship, bringing her total length to 777 feet, making her the largest airship in the world.
And you're now looking at the airship 101. This ship is on its way from England to India. It had 57 uh, people on board, approximately, including the uh, Director of Civil Aviation, uh, Air Vice Marshal uh, Sir Stephen Branca. Also, the Minister of Air, Lord Thompson. Uh, out of the um, crew and passengers, there are exactly seven survivors. These, um, these are engineers that must have got out of the ship as she struck the side of the hill that you're now looking at. She was flying very low in a terrible storm, and uh, the wind blew it sideways, and the gondolas, engine gondolas, hit the side of the hill. And one sad thing I noticed on arriving here was the observation cockpit at the end of the airship, which you can see, um, still flying um, the British flag. Yeah. in England. All I can say is that we shall be very glad to all get back, and we hope to be back tomorrow. And we, the only sad thing about it is that we can't bring everybody else with us. Let us take a last look at the R100 as she was in 1930, when she held the admiration of the whole country. Here we see her being secured to the mooring master Carlington on the completion of her maiden voyage. She was a sister ship of the ill-fated R101 which crashed at Beauvais a little over a year ago. But the R100 was more fortunate in her voyages and made a successful trip to Canada and back. Few would recognize in this network of bare metal the former Colossus of the Air. She is being broken up by a firm of metal merchants who have bought her from the government at a fraction of her former cost. No offers having been made for her as an airship in flying trim. And so, after an expenditure of over one million pounds on airship development, we are left with this sad spectacle of scrap.